Hello everybody, it's Weather Outlooks, and today I'll be talking about a severe weather, a major severe weather outbreak today for parts of Arkansas, southeastern, um, yeah, southeastern Oklahoma, parts of Arkansas, northern Louisiana, almost all of Mississippi, and parts of Alabama and Georgia. Um, I'm going to go take a look at the here, here's the storm prediction here, day one um, outlook, and you can see that we have a marginal risk. This marginal risk came out last night. You can see it is right here in that red area. Now, this is mainly just for wind and a possible, um, yeah, this is mainly for wind damage. Um, so, mar large hail is definitely going to be possible in this area, as well as multiple tornadoes. And then around that, we have that orange area, which is the... Um, enhanced risk and then around that we have that slight risk which is the yellow which does include the DFW area at least the eastern parts of it and then we have that green area the marginal risk so we're going to take a look at those individual threats right now so well this is the individual threats of tornadoes and um, that you can see the yellow area is 10% area, the yellow area is the highest area, and then we have the brown area, which is a 5%, and then the green area, which is a 2%. So, and then if we take a look at the hail threat, hail is also going to be a very significant factor. You can see um, the main hail threat with um, this severe weather event is mostly going to be for Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, parts of Mississippi, and up through Texas and um, yeah, northeast Texas. And then we have the, you can see we have that significant hatched area going into the DFW Metroplex. So that's where they're expecting some possible significant hail. So I'm going to be talking about all that in this video today. So let's take a look at the wind for now. Yeah, here's the wind threat. Very, very significant wind threat. We might be, it depending on how much damage it does, we might be classifying this storm as a derecho which we haven't had one since last year in august august i think 29th last year and in iowa and it was a very bad derecho in cedar rapids i think they recorded a wind gust of 105 miles an hour so derechos do do a lot of damage and they produce very high winds and we have a possibility to get a derecho to develop today in oklahoma Go down through Arkansas, northeast Texas, and Louisiana, and Mississippi, and Alabama, and parts of Georgia. Um, but anyways, so let's go take a look at the models now. So first off, we're going to be starting west to east on the severe weather. So we're going to be starting off with the dry line setup that we've got because there's going to be multiple things going on this day. So as of right, actually, let's go take a look at the satellite first um, just to tell you guys what's going on. So this is the satellite right here what we're looking at is the satellite imagery and um if i play this loop you can see we do have some thunderstorms developing or have already developed mature thunderstorms within this area we have a large dry line coming in from the west to dfw it should stall right about there where i just drew my my um blue line I, it should stall which it most likely will stall right around there and that will likely produce possibly produce some nasty supercells in front of it and eastward and then we also we will have be having a large cold front drop south from oklahoma and that will produce the derecho that will develop and produce large or widespread wind damage in that section there let's go take a look at the um <clears throat> yeah this is the radar and yeah so this is the radar we have multiple severe thunderstorm warnings if you let me turn off the radar. Um, so yeah, we got a th severe thunderstorm up here for Springville near Joplin, Missouri. Um, we'll take a look at this one really quick. You can see this one's mostly going to be, I would assume, a wind, a wind damager. Um, and then if we look down south a little bit more, we got Arkansas and southern parts of Arkansas. This is also going to be a hail and wind threat with this one. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at this one, see what's going on with it. 60 mile an hour wind gust and quarter sized hail. So these are the two main things that are going on so far for the planes, and then we have a bunch of other stuff going on for um, Virginia's, and um, and then we have 
yeah, the Carolinas, and then the severe thunderstorm warnings for Alabama and parts of Georgia. So now let's go take a look at the um, models. So this is what this is about. Uh, I think this is about three hours in the future, and you can see we have well organized thunderstorms from Oklahoma, northern Oklahoma, starting to develop along that cold front down into the panhandle of Texas. So well organized thunderstorms up there, and then we also have some an or I, I I can't really tell you if this is going to be organizing or not, but we have at what it looks like an organized cluster of storms in southern Arkansas and then we have some strong to may possibly severe thunderstorms in Alabama <clears throat> or no Mississippi and at Alabama <clears throat> and then if we go and what we're going to be focusing on is the dry line and you can see we um we the cap is weakening very fast in this area as we speak actually as we get those temperatures to soar into the mid to high 80s and maybe even the 90s if we can get that nice daytime heating and um if we look closely according to the nam three kilometer you can see some bubbles starting to develop and these are thunderstorms trying to break through the cap the cap is very strong so we're gonna need a lot of forcing we need a very strong updraft to break through the cap but once it breaks through it's not going to be very well. We're, we're talking baseball to maybe even softball-sized hail for North Texas. And, yeah, so if we can get that cap to break later this afternoon, it DFW will be seeing some significant hail damage, possibly, parts of DFW. So let's go take a look at the next slide. And you can see this one down here has, obviously, you can tell it's easily broken through the cap um it's developing and organizing as we speak this is most likely going to be a supercell anything that develops along the dry line has a very good chance of becoming a supercell in 20 to 30 minutes of development that's the type of environment that we've got you can see more thunderstorms starting to poke through the cap for dallas and fort worth you can see one of them starting to develop in dallas and fort worth and then if we take a look at the next slide you can see that one does indeed develop in Dallas and Fort Worth, right near Keller, um, sort of near Dallas, and a little bit in, in between where the DFW airport is. This one is organizing very fast. It's already got a nice anvil stretching um, on the other side of it. That's that little blue shadow kind of thing. And then this one's organizing as we speak as well. The in, With this environment... Once one develops, once one storm develops along the dry line, nothing's going to stop it from weakening. The, all the ingredients for very severe thunderstorms are in place for from the dry line and eastward all the way till Georgia. But yeah, these, these storms are really going to be get going. And then with this cold front will likely obscure these supercells and make uh, make sure that those don't produce any large hail after that. And then this one in... DFW is definitely starting to go on or undergo intensification. You can see that one there. Um, this one's likely a supercell by then. This one is a very strong, looks like it's becoming to or it's becoming a uh, more of a linear Boeing echo type mode from what it looks like. And then this one, we're starting to get that duratio to develop. This is just the first wave. We're going to have a massive second wave move through developing right now in Oklahoma. Or in this slide it is let's go one more hour out and this one it see the dry line storms begin to oh I didn't mean to click on that sounding but yeah that cold front is beginning to drop south into Oklahoma and Texas the dry line storms are beginning to weaken um, I think I'm not really sure why they are maybe just because of heading into a more cooled environment um, but yeah, we have our first round of thunderstorms or derecho thunderstorms developing right now in Mississippi and then Oklahoma. That's where the main show is going to develop. You can see thunderstorms. We might be able to get a second round of thunderstorms for the DFW area if we can have those right ingredients pop up. Let's go to ne next slide. And it doesn't very look like or it doesn't really look like the DFW will be seeing much of the squall line type mode. Um, from this one, but yeah, you can see a very strong amount of thunderstorms or a very large amount of thunderstorms developing. Let's go one more slide out, and then yeah, those very those will start to organize very quickly as they head 
southeast, and that's exactly what they do. You can see that this there. Very, very large amount of thunderstorms that are likely going to be severe heading into the Mississippi and Alabama area. Now, um, I don't have much time left. Let's. I think we'll have enough time to take a look at a few ingredients. So 05Z. So yeah, this is along the dry line. This is the mixed layer cape. I like using this because it resembles more of what the thunderstorms are actually ingesting into their system. And <clears throat> you can see we have that cold front dropping south in Oklahoma. A large of a large cool or cold pool developed over Arkansas as we get multiple strong thunderstorms move out through that area. So this area is completely stripped full of ingredients. That doesn't mean thunderstorms won't be able to develop in there, but it just means that anything that does develop or goes through there will likely weaken or not develop. So um, yeah, that, that area is just a dead zone, no ingredients. But if we look at the dry line, dry line is juiced. It is full of energy just waiting for a storm to develop along the dry line and eat up all of this energy and you can see if we look at the jewels of cape mixed layer 4700 dallas fort worth area 3900 4000 jewels of cape not bad at all that's extreme mounts and then surface based pretty much the same story 4000 5000 and then let's look at the cap you can see absolute no cap in place whatsoever for the dfw area so we're going to have to watch how this plays out and if the cap can break because it, on multi multiple model scenarios it is showing the cap breaking and eroding and allowing multiple thunderstorms to develop along the dry line. But we're going to have to find out and see how this plays out. Let's go take a look at the dew points and the dew points are well into the 70s, high 60s and 70s and then those thunderstorms start to develop those cool pools or the outflow boundaries. But um. Anyways, I think this is going to be it for today. I hope you're having a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like my videos and comment if you think I should improve anything on my videos. Have a great day.